Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 287, and I'm Lisa, your host, also known as Fiber Nymph. I will put my screen in here that shows you all the places you can find me on social media and how to contact me. Okay, so today is Thursday, July 5th. Yesterday was the 4th of July everywhere, but here in the U.S. that's a holiday. So if you celebrated yesterday, Independence Day, um, I hope you had a good day and didn't get rained out or anything or die of heat stroke depending on where you were. It was quite hot here. Um, it's raining today though. I have the door open over here. This um, You can't see my hand when I do that. Um, the French door is open over here. So if you hear wild chirping, our bird feeders right out there, um, and there's some pretty big thunder happening occasionally, I don't know, and I also don't know what's going on with my hair, it's tickling me. Anyway, so there may be some ambient noise, but hopefully it'll be fun nature noise. Then my dog is over here, and if the thunder gets too bad, you'll probably hear her skittering about because thunder freaks her out, and um, she'll probably come over here and try to like climb on top of my feet. <laughs> which will be great. Anyway, um, that's where we're at so far today. I have a lot to talk about, so I'm going to just dive right in. Um, yeah, because I also have a full work day ahead of me, and it's a little bit after 8 in the morning. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's a busy day. So, And I have my coffee in my Monster Mug. The Monster took a week off last week, but he's back this week. Alrighty, so let's start with what I have finished, because I have a finished object for you this week, and it is my Around the Bend shawl, and I just couldn't be happier with it. I'm, I love it. I love it. It's way too big to show you the whole thing. Um, I'll probably try to insert a picture that I took and I did post on Instagram. Um, but here it is in all its lovely, lovely glory. This ended up being 110 inches long. <laughs> I did not block it. There was really no reason to. Um, the pattern, the way the pattern is, it's it's not really garter, but there's these garter ridges every like four rows, I guess. Um, every fourth row is a garter ridge. So it, it lays really flat and there was nothing curling, like the edges weren't curling. The only thing that curled a little bit was, um, this edge, which was the edge that you end up casting off part way through, that wants to curl in a little bit, but honestly, I don't think blocking would do much about that just because it's right on the edge of some stockinette. So I did not bother blocking it, but it is huge and squishy and I just love it so much. Um, again, this was the Around the Bend shawl. The pattern is by Nim Teasdale. Um, and this is out of my hand spun that I spun from last year's um, holiday countdown collection, the fiber version. So I spun up all the minis, um, the, sorry, <laughs> yarn in my mouth. Um, as I told you last week, I did run out of yarn um, somewhere in around here. Here, I think I was, I, had, I was in the red section of this contrast. Um, and so I did have to spin a little bit more just to get through the rest of this, but I did end up with leftovers too. So it worked out fine. Um, but I'm super happy with this shawl. It's going to be really warm and squishy and comfy in the winter today. Not so much because it's quite warm already and humid. So there's no reason to wrap myself in a big wool shawl. I'm just going to toss it across there to the couch that's behind you. <laughs> But I'm really happy with it, so yay. I highly recommend that pattern. It was very, very fun to do, very memorizable. Um, <coughs> pretty potato chippy because you, you want to keep getting to that next garter ridge to do that next, you know, bit um, that has the little eyelet that happens. It was fun, a lot of fun. All right, so that is finished. And then I have some other finished objects that are all quite small. Um, this is a series of finished objects, and this was part of um, the project that I've been talking about 
during the knit along segment of the podcast in the past, but because this particular knit along that we were doing, the everybody else's cow cow is over now, I'm just going to tell you about <clears throat> my um, projects here now in this segment, the <laughs> finished object segment. So, as I've mentioned the past couple of weeks, I am participating in the Down Cellar Studios Splash Pad Party, specifically with the X Games Challenge. So, the X Games Challenge is a series of eight things to accomplish during the course of the Splash Pad Party, which is June and July. So, it ends the end of July. So, I have completed five of the eight now. So, I'm going to show you those. Um, Let's see, I think I put some of them, hmm. here they are, I have to find things. So this, I, I showed you a few of these last week, and honestly, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to even take them out of the bag. This is my 18 little tiny um, mitered squares, <laughs> so here's what they look like, that's one of them. Um, but there are 18 of them in this bag that I just used various and sundry leftovers of um, bedazzled or in one case it was some of, um, it's not my yarn, it was the leftovers from Moonstone Dye Works um, that I used in my Winnie shawl. Um, so I have a few squares that are out of that yarn. But anyway, there's all 18 are in here. Um, as I told you, my plan for these is to put them together in on the diamond tips so there'll be diamonds and there'll be open spaces between them and um, kind of use them as an overlay over like a small pillow. I think that would be pretty. It would have fabric obviously underneath it but I haven't thought that far ahead. Um, I'll need to do more of these to get a square because obviously 18 is not going to make a square. But that's okay. I only needed 18 for this challenge. So that was finished. And that was the number seven on the list of eight things, the golf course where you had to go out for 18 holes, which meant you had to make 18 of something. So that was my 18. Then I jumped back up to the top of the list, which number one was the pool. And that was where you were supposed to knit with a cool color, blue, green, or purple. So I pulled out a skein or a ball of um, cotton, the sugar and cream cotton. This one is um, sugar and cream swimming pool is the color. And I did a dishcloth. So let's see which is, this is up. Yeah, this goes this way. Not that it really matters. It's a dishcloth. Um, I decided that for these little, the rest of these basically, well, most of them, I was going to use these as reasons to try out new patterns because for little things I often just default to the same things like for dishcloths I usually either do a mitered square dishcloth which I just did all those little mitered squares so I didn't feel like doing a mitered square or I do the grandma's favorite dishcloth um, which is the one that you work on the, the diagonal it gets, until you get it as big as you want then you go in. Um, I didn't want to do that one either because I've done it a lot and I like that pattern a lot and I do it without the eyelets in the middle I just do it like garter stitch in the middle but I wanted to try something different oh the other one I often use is the one that kind of looks like a flower I can't remember what that one's called but anyway I wanted to try something new so this pattern is a freebie on Ravelry it's called um, waffle dishcloth and it's from love to make love to knit dishcloths I don't know who Love to Knit Dishcloths is, but they have a lot of dishcloth patterns out on Rav that are all free. So this is one of them, and it is sort of a waffle stitch. It's not the same waffle stitch as the like the blueberry waffle socks, but it's similar, and it looks like that on the back. So just a nice basic dishcloth. I can't remember how many stitches I cast on. I did not... It, basically, the pattern is more of a recipe, and it just tells you you need to have you know, repeats of three plus one. So you can make things as big as you want. And um, that's what I did. So this is a good size dishcloth. So that was for challenge number one. Then I jumped down to challenge number eight, which was hit the showers. Um, and you were supposed to make something that is bath or shower related. So using the same yarn, I knit a little bath scrubby 
It's a scrubby. It could be a dish scrubby, I guess, too. I don't know. But I could see using this like as a scrubby for your face, like to cleanse and exfoliate or something, get makeup off. It was a really cute little pattern. It was called, what was it called? Nope, that's not what it was called. It was just called Scrubby, I think, from the dishcloth duo. There is a, pa a dishcloth pattern in this as well, and I think it's sort of along the lines as the grandma's favorite dishcloth. I didn't make that. I just used the Scrubby pattern um, by Lynn Bortner. And again, the same sugar and cream swimming pool colorway. It's cute. I mean, it's a cute little scrubby. As I was knitting this, I'm like, I don't understand how this is going to work. <laughs> like, I had to just trust the pattern. And it did work. Um, it's a little flatter than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would maybe be a little poofier. I did um, put my waist yarn, like my tail, and through both sides of this. When, after I'd cinched, you, you cinch the edges together to make the swirly thing. Um, and I, I stuck it through the center to kind of hold it together, if that makes sense, rather than just have it open up. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's why it's flatter. I really don't know. I don't care. It's a scrubby. It'll work. And it used up yarn. <laughs> So then that was the number number eight. So then I jumped up to number three, which was the bar, um, which you, you're refreshing yourself with an ice cold beverage of your choice and you're supposed to knit a cup or mug cozy or anything beverage related. Well, I didn't really want to do a cozy because I don't tend to use them. So I knit this, which is a coaster. Um, it's a little concave because of how I had to put it together, but that's just me. It works fine. Um, here I'll sh I'll demonstrate with my monster. So there you go, coaster. Um, again, out of this same ball of yarn, I was getting a lot of mileage out of this yarn, and look, it's still a good bit there. Um, this is just called coaster on Ravelry, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at my show notes down here, down here, in case you're wondering. Um, coaster by Squibbly Bups <laughs> on Ravelry. Um, yeah, and honestly, all you're doing is you're doing I-cord. I have no idea how long my I-cord ended up being because I was actually stitching it together as I went. So you knit your I-cord and then you just start coiling it up. And then on this side, I was using just regular sewing thread and just kind of whip stitching the I-cord segments together as we went around. That was really all there was to it. And it turned out super cute. And I cord is kind of mindless, you know, you can sit there and it does not take long to make a lot of eye cord, frankly. Um, I don't think I made it as long as it called for. I think you we were supposed to make it like 65 inches long. I think that would have turned out more like a small placemat than a coaster, but whatever. It, it works and it satisfies one of the requirements. <laughs> um, Lastly, I got, um, I did number four, which was the playground, and I diverged from this cotton yarn and I pulled out this ball of oh, we've got needles impaling it um, this ball of just leftovers orange um, this is my fiber and dye works cozy base worsted weight um, in the pumpkin orange color and I knit this okay so the playground sorry uh, knit something child or pet related something to wear or play with so I knit basically a catnip mouse. It's a cat toy. There is no catnip in this toy. <laughs> I did not use a pattern. I just winged it. Um, I And I did it on DPNs, which is interesting because I have not knit a circular kind of thing on DPNs in a very long time, but I had the DPNs out because that's what I was using to do the I-cord, and I was kind of too lazy to get up and find a circular that I could magic loop it. So I just did the I-cord, or did the DPNs. I cast on 27 stitches, divided them over three needles, um, I knit two rounds and then did a decrease at the, like a knit two together at the end of each DPN, then knit two rounds, decrease, I just did that the whole way to the tip. It kind of looks like a funny carrot, <laughs> really, out of this color. Um, but yeah, then I cinched it up at the back by um, just stitching together half of the stitches up here and then down here I did sort of like so it's sort of like a, a triangle-y shape I don't know it's nothing fancy and it's actually kind of weird looking 
but whatever. And then um, I stuffed it. I stuffed it before I closed it up, obviously. I stuffed it with some waste fluff from um, combing the fiber that I'm prepping for my spinning project this month. Um, because I figure, even though that's not catnip, a lot of times the cats, if they have access to a fleece, will go crazy over it. So I thought, well, maybe they would like the smell of some fleece inside the cat toy. So far, nobody's really gone for it, but whatever. It's done. Um, the tail is just... I had the, the tail of the yarn that I'd cinched everything up, and then I threaded another long piece through, had it double, I braided it, and then just tied a knot. So that's its tail. I didn't bother with eyes because the cats really don't care. Trust me. Um, so that is number my fifth one that I did, the playground. So I only have three more to go, and the next one is I'm going to do is the cabana, where you're shading yourself from the hot sun, and you're supposed to knit something out of warm colors, reds, oranges, or yellows. And so I'm going to do another dishcloth. Um, it's funny, most of my dishcloth cotton is in cool colors, blues and greens and neutrals and things. I only had this one skein of red, and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to do another dishcloth because I like making dishcloths. And you can never have too many, or you can give them as gifts and things like that. So, anyway, that is where we're at with that. Um, and then that will just leave the garden and the dining hall. And I don't know what I'm going to do for those yet, but I'll figure it out. So, that is my progress on that, which was fun. It was just it was fun to just do some new little projects. And actually, what it reminded me of was a long time ago, back when I first started the podcast low the many years ago back in 2011 um the first year or two we did monthly knit-alongs do any of you guys remember this we did monthly knit-alongs of really small things they were things I, I can't remember the exact parameters that i had put on those knit-alongs but i remember they were just super small little projects that were easy to do and um that's kind of what this reminded me of because any of those that i just did would be would have been great projects for that particular type of knit along. So anyway, maybe we'll do a mini things knit along later this year. That might be fun. All right, uh, that's all my finished objects. I did work on a couple of things. I have to find them. I have stuff everywhere. Um, I worked on my daughter's birthday socks, and they're not finished, but both socks are now complete as tubes anyway. <laughs> um, I finished the this one this morning I put the toe on it so they both just need their heels their afterthought heels but they match up pretty well am I holding them even yeah the striping matches up pretty well which I always think is cool so I will do the heels the, the heel on this one will be from this yarn and vice versa um, this is just a basic uh, three by one rib on the cuff and on the instep and then of course the sole part is the stockinette Really nothing too exciting to tell you other than the yarn is my Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bedazzled Base and this is an inversible set in the Aquashock Blue and Magenta combination. So these are for my daughter's birthday and I want to finish these up before we go to Florida so I can give those to her when I see her this month rather than wait for her birthday next month because I probably will not see her next month. <laughs> so those got worked on and then the other thing that I worked on is a new cast on <sighs> okay so my mom is getting married in like two weeks two weeks from this Saturday is my mother's wedding I have no idea what I'm wearing yet <sighs> and I had this moment of insanity that I thought well maybe I could knit a top I don't know why I thought that because I have a crazy busy month this month. But anyway, I decided um, I was going to cast on a Tegna or Tenya. I'm not really sure of the correct pronunciation. I've heard it both ways. I'm going to say Tegna by Caitlin Hunter, which seems to be the pattern that the whole world is knitting right now. And it calls for a fingering weight yarn, but I wanted to do it out of um, this yarn that I swatched a while back, which is Elsbeth Levold Hempathy, which is technically a DK weight yarn. I don't think it knits up like a DK weight yarn, at least not at the gauge that I would want to wear something. Um, so I am I'm making it work for Tegna. And I believe I did look on Ravelry and found a couple of other projects that had... Sorry, my hair is bothering me. 
I need to get a haircut before my mom's wedding too. Um, that used Hempathy for Tegna and it'll work. It'll be fine. So anyway, this is the swatch. My swatch was useless because I got practically the same gauge with both needle sizes. Actually the bigger, the smaller needle size even gave me a larger gauge. It was weird. But this is, this is the yarn I'm going to use. So I cast on 380 stitches because if you're not familiar with Tegna, here let me show you the picture. It's a very pretty top. It is, well, all right, I'll show you this image here. So it's lace at the bottom. You start at the bottom, do the lace, and then work up. Um, and it's pretty, it's basically a seamless top. I'm going to make some mods, though, of course. Um, I, I cast on, it's, okay, the other thing about this is it's supposed, number one, it's written to be cropped. I'm not going to do it cropped. I'm going to do it longer. And it's also written, written, <laughs> written to have a lot of positive ease, like, I don't know, at 5 to 10 inches, it says. 5 to 10 inches of positive ease around the bust. That would be horribly uncomfortable for me, so I'm not doing that either. I'm going to make it a little more fitted. Um, if you watch the Fluffy Fibers podcast, Isabel did one of these tops, and she did hers kind of what I want to do. She made it a little longer, plus with the Hempathy, it's going to grow, so I need to be careful of quite how much longer I make it, because I did my wedding skirt out of Hempathy as well, and that grew more than I had expected, so I have to be careful there. Um, I think what I'll end up doing is I'll knit the body to a certain point, and then I might block it and see how much it grows at that point, and then decide if I need to go more or if I can, you know, um, stop and do the top part. All right, so anyway, I'm going to do that, and then I'm also going to not do the sleeves. I, I don't want sleeves on this. I just want it to be kind of like this, a sleeveless top. So, and that is how Isabel made hers. She just didn't do the sleeves. In fact, she didn't even finish the sleeves in any way. She just let it roll, and I kind of like it. It looks cute that way. Um, so I'll see if I like that once I get mine done. And then the neckline, I think the neckline, I have not read through the whole pattern. I know you're supposed to, but I didn't. Um, I think the neckline you can either just let roll or you can do like some sort of finishing. I don't know if it's an I-cord finish or what. I'll figure that out once I get there though. In general, when I first saw this top when it came out, I saw all the cropped versions and I'm like, uh, no, cropped and big and overly positive eased. But then I started seeing ones that were modified to be longer and a little more fitted and I liked it a lot. So. I decided to cast this on. There is no way this is going to be ready in two weeks. It's just not. I mean, granted, once I get through the lace, it's just stocking at, but the lace is taking me a while because I'm working over 380 stitches. <laughs> um, that's how many I had to cast on. And this is what I have so far. This is the first five rows of the lace. There's 49 rows. <laughs> um, I will say, though, it's very easy to do. It's not a complicated lace. Although you are working lace, you're working patterning in every round. I think as you get into the lace patterning, there are some rounds that are just straight knit, but there's not very many and they're not super regular. So this is what it looks like so far. I think it's really pretty. I love that shape. It's such an unusual shape. You've got this little, you know, indent here, but then it's sort of squared off here. I just think it's really adorable. I love this pattern. I'm enjoying working on it. Um, Hempathy can be splitty, and so the needles that I happen to pull out to work on it are some Haya Haya Sharps, which is not what I typically go to because I don't like them. I don't like Sharps for socks, but as it turns out, Sharps are perfect for working with Hempathy to keep it from splitting. Um, and, and you also have to do some knit four togethers, which well, the wool yarn is a little easier, but this yarn has no give, this Hempathy. Um, so it's really good to have the super pointy needles. And I just have rubber bands around the ends to keep my stitches from falling off. It's my, my cheap way of having, you know, needle caps or whatever. So it's, it's coming along. And I'm using my stitch markers that I talked about last week. This is the tree from the uh, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit set that I got from... A door knit from Steph and um, some of the little ring markers that came with that set and another set. 
so yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It just, it takes a while to get through a round, and um, I don't think it'll be done in time to wear in Florida in a couple weeks. I'll be very ma amazed. Maybe if I worked on nothing but that, and I could, once I get the heels in those socks, I could just be very monogamous with this top, but I'm not going to count on it. I need to have an outfit ready that I can know that I could wear. So, plus, that would be, it's going to be sort of warm in Florida in July on the beach for the wedding in that top. That would be warm. I can tell you that. Plus, I think I'll have to wear something under it, maybe. I'm not 100% sure of that. I don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. Um, but that's all I knit on this week. Um, spinning wise, I have spun a little bit more of the, I don't even have it here to show. Oh yeah, I do. Here it is. This, this fiber, this is the Unwind Yarn Company. Um, some of her, I don't know what she calls it. It's mixed BFL, but it's like, I think she calls it swirl BFL. Um, in these really pretty sea colors. I just love them. It's on my wheel. I didn't take the bobbin off, but it's coming along. I'm working on it a little bit. I'm trying to spin a little bit every morning just to have some quiet, mindful time. I'm trying to do a mindfulness exercise thing at least through this month. It's not going well <laughs> because some mornings I've just, I've not had the time to just sit and do this and I know I have a lot of work to do and then I get anxious and it's very hard to be quiet and still and mindful when you are at in that anxious, I've got to get to work state. So that part isn't going very well, but I'm still trying. Um, along those lines, I don't know if you guys listen to the Yarns at Yinhu podcast with Sarah Pomegranate. Um, she talked a couple weeks ago about the mindfulnessschools.org site that she did a mindfulness class last summer um, through that, but she said they're offering this mindful summer I think it's called I don't know I signed up for it it's free and it's basically every week I think for maybe six weeks um, there's a new a leader that will put out like a, a video I don't I didn't watch the video because I was not at home to watch it but I read the transcript of it and it just talks about various aspects of mindfulness and encourages you to build a mindful practice Again, I'm having a crap time at doing that, but I'm trying, and it was an interesting article to read anyway, or transcript to read. So if you want to check that out, I think it's mindfulschools.org. I'll try to remember to put that in the show notes. Um, okay, so that was spinning. Um, the other thing that I did spinning related is I started combing um, the fleece. Bunny, remember Bunny the fleece? Um, I started combing her fleece to get ready to start spinning it for our unofficial tour de fleece spin along that we're doing this month. Um, so here's some of it. <laughs> it's so fluffy. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going through the fleece. I, I decided it was going to be folly to try to just separate this fleece out all in one fell swoop. I'm sorry I keep leaning out of the screen, but I can't do this any differently right now. Um, so for instance, here is a lump of bunny's fleece. Do you see all the different colors in there? Now this brownish, reddish brownish color seems to be on the ends of all of the fleece. So I don't know if that's some sort of sun bleaching or what it is, but all of it has that. But the base colors are, they range from this really light silver through a medium silver to this dark charcoal gray silver gray. It's kind of like a steel wool color almost. So basically what I've been doing is I've just been pulling clumps of bunny out of there because that's the other thing. I did not try to open this fleece up because I got the feeling it would not go well. It looks like... I don't know the story behind this fleece completely other than her name was Bunny and that it's Carlene's sheep from the prairie and I fell in love with it because it was so curly and crimpy. And I don't know if it's a, a function of the type of sheep. It's a three-quarters BFL, one-quarter Gotland. I don't know if it's a function of how that fleece grew or what, but I don't get the sense that if I did lay it out, I could open it up and see the shape of a sheep, which is basically what you're supposed to get from a well-shorn sheep. I feel like this is just a really jumbled bunch of those locks. And so, I don't know. It just seems easiest for me at this point. I'm pulling it out and I'm separating a little bit at a time into bags. 
Um, let's see. This is this is the darkest stuff I've got. This is the medium, and obviously I can't get it completely separated. And I already um, <laughs> combed all of the real light stuff. So here, let's see if I can show you a compare. Oh, comparison. Can you hear that thunder? Ah! Oh my goodness. Okay, things are coming apart here. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> See, once I pull them off the combs, I'm trying to wrap them into nice little bird's nests. So this is the lightest stuff, and then this is the darkest, and then there's some that comes in between there. It's so soft, though, and it smells so good. It's really a very clean fleece. I'm not having to pick much of anything out of it, um, you know, like poo or dirt or veg matter. There hasn't been a lot. As I comb it, there is definitely like dust and probably, you know, yeah, I don't know, veg matter dust, I guess, um, coming out of it onto my lap. I really should put like a towel or something on my lap when I'm doing it. But it's been fun and that's actually been pretty relaxing, just the, the um, motion of doing that combing. I can't do it for too long because it actually starts to hurt my shoulder. Um, so I'm just taking my time and doing a little bit at a time, but my, my little basket here is full right now that I'm putting it in. So I think what I'm going to do, because <clears throat> my other, my original thought was I was going to separate the three colors and then spin them lightest to darkest, like a gradient. But I think I'm not going to do that because I have a lot of gradient yarns that I've spun and I don't always use them as much as I'd like to. Um, and I think it would be more fun to just kind of do like some of one color, then some of another color, and then some of another, you know, like intermix it and end up with longer stretches of color. Yeah, like chain ply it after I've done all the singles and have just long stretches of all those colors. Um, so sort of like a self striping, but not in any planned kind of way. I think that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's my, my plan for an unplanned self-striping of the colors of Bunny, the sheep. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing I did towards um, this goal of getting this all processed is I ordered a hackle. <laughs> and if you don't know what a hackle is, um, <coughs> excuse me. I showed this a couple weeks ago. I showed my combs a couple weeks ago um, and I can't reach them and I don't want to get up and disrupt things. I'll show them another week. But basically, you know, the combs have those big, long, spiky stainless steel tines on them. Um, and a hackle is basically the same sort of thing, except it's long. So it's a long piece of wood that has the spikes sticking straight up. Okay, so imagine like a very dangerous small fence. <laughs> Um, I ordered it from a shop on Etsy and once it comes in, I'll tell you all about it. I don't have all the details right now. It did ship already. So hopefully I'll have it by the next time I record, but I think it'll allow me to process more fiber faster. You can also use hackles to blend fiber. Um, which I mean, you could do that with combs as well, but the hackles, um, if you already have processed like top or roving or whatever, actually Paradise Fibers, uh, if you're on Instagram and you follow Paradise Fibers, they've been doing um, in IGTV videos about blending fiber using hackles, like colors of fiber. That's been really interesting to watch. Um, so you can use hackle for that as well. Um, there's not the combing aspect of it, but you can also process your fiber with a hackle. So that's what I'm going to try to do and see how that goes. I don't know. I may be making that up. Maybe you're not supposed to use a hackle for that, but I'm pretty sure you can. I'm going to try it. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. What else? Uh, let's go to knit alongs. I'm sorry if this sounds like I'm speeding through things. I'm not trying to, but I do have a whole lot of work I need to get done today, so I, I want to get through this. Plus, I don't want it to be like an hour and a half long. <laughs> Um, knit alongs. So the May June knit along, the everybody else's cow cow is now over. So thank you to everyone who participated. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to nonchalantly move things around here. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job. It's like, yes, what are you doing over there, Lisa? What is with your hand? Well, 
allow me to just bend out of the screen yet again. Okay. <laughs> okay, here I am. So the everybody else's knit along, knit along is over. Thank you for participating. And I have prizes this week. Um, technically, I've got four prizes for you to choose from. So there are two winners. But here are your prize choices. Number one, this is some leftover, this is the holdover prize from the last time I did a prize drawing. This is some, <coughs> excuse me, fiber from Tempted Fiber. Um, it's called Harmony is the colorway. And this is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon um, roving. Beautiful colors, those deep rich colors. So that is one prize option. Another prize option is an outdoorsy set, which is one of my patterns. And this is a worsted weight set. Um, this creates a four, you can use this four different ways. This color combination is um, a self-striping, which is gray scale, and then some silver gray as the, um, the semi-solid. So outdoorsy set, yarn, and you get the pattern code that you can download on Ravelry. And then the third prize that you can choose from is a set of stitch markers. These are the ones I showed you last week from um, Adorn It from Steph. Um, but she had sent two for, the, for a drawing or to give away. And so I'm going to put both of them up. So if you want stitch markers, you can pick which set you want. So there's this set with the green rings and the bicycles on the um, lobster claw and the, um, the beginning of round marker. And then this one has pink, pink markers and a lily pad that says, I kiss frogs. And then a little frog beginning of round marker. So you can pick from those two sets. So technically there's four prize choices this month instead of just three, but that's okay. <laughs> So, um, first of all, I drew two winners um, by random number generator, and these were just from the July posts since I had already, or I'm sorry, just from the June posts since I'd already done May posts. Um, and for July, the general chatter winner was, um, which I have to say, it was really hard. I mean, almost everybody posted pictures in there, so it's not like I was looking just for a chatter post. So the chatter post winner actually does have a picture in her post, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> the general chatter winner was post number 164, who was Spin Knit Love, and that's Ingrid. So congratulations, Ingrid. And then the photo post winner was post number 119, who is Moose Loon. And I don't know your first name, but congratulations. So Ingrid and Moose Loon, please PM me on Ravelry and let me know your top two prize choices and your mailing address, full name and mailing address, so I can get your prize out to you. So... Thank you to everybody who took part in that knit along. It was a lot of fun. Um, I have got to see a lot of different projects being done for a lot of different cows, and that was a lot of fun. I hope you guys, you know, got to double dip and triple dip into a lot of different cows doing that too. <laughs> so again, July is our unofficial Tour de Fleece spin along, um, which is underway. This is in lieu of having an official Tour de Fleece team. If you're on the Tour de Fleece team and you still want to post in our group, that's absolutely fine. It's most welcome, actually. And um, if you're not, but you want to just spin along anyway, please do. I would be happy to have you. There hasn't been a ton of chatter in that thread yet, but I'm hoping now that July is here and Tour de Fleece will be officially starting, I believe, this Saturday or Sunday. I don't know. I didn't look it up. <laughs> um, I hope there will be more posting. So please join us if you are going to be spinning in any way, even if you're not doing it with anything having to do with Tour de Fleece. Just let us know what you're spinning this month. I'd love to hear. Um, and you know what I'm spinning. I'm, I'm going to be working on Bunny. That's my official project for this unofficial spin along. <laughs> I do have another drawing for you this week though that is totally unrelated to any other kind of contest. Um, my friend Sarah, who is Sarah Jordan, who's PA Knitwit on Ravelry, as you know, she is a designer and she designs awesome patterns. Um, she has designed in the past five months, I guess, two different patterns for socks featuring a new heel that she's developed. So the first one that came out in February was called the Non-Euclidean Heel. And I think I may have mentioned this back at that time. 
So this is a top-down sock pattern that works this, um, this special heel that she came up with. And I'm going to just read to you the little introductory paragraph from the non-Euclidean pattern. Um, Geometry was my favorite math class in high school. Sarah. No. <laughs> Math was never ever my favorite class ever until I got to grad school and had to take statistics. I liked statistics, don't ask me why. But that has nothing to do with this pattern. Okay, um, the logic of it just made more sense to me than any other math class I'd taken. Even today, I'm strangely satisfied by geometric patterns whenever I see them. Designing knitwear has offered me a new way to use geometry and challenged me to translate two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional objects. This heel was born of a desire to create a shape that was somewhere between a triangle and a pyramid to hug the back of the foot. So that is what that is. And I don't know how well you can see on that picture how that works, but it, it does, it, it's like this triangular shape that goes up the back of your heel, the way this heel is constructed and on the bottom as well. I'm gonna describe this horribly. So go to the pattern page if you really wanna look at the pattern. Um, but that was the first one. But again, it was top down. And then she said she had gotten a lot of requests for this heel to be done toe up. So she worked on um, reconstructing it from the toe up. And that one she just published um, within the last few days. And that is called CPCTC, <laughs> which stands for congruent parts of congruent, congruent triangles are congruent. <laughs> and I will again read to you um, the intro paragraph. Um, when I released non-Euclidean, I got a lot of requests for a toe-up version. In general, I've had more luck with knitting my socks cuffed down as they seem to fit better. I've always had issues with placing the heel in the right place with toe-up socks. The more I thought about it, though, the more I realized that there was no reason why the heel used in non-Euclidean couldn't be reversed for a toe-up sock. In sticking with the use of geometry as an inspiration for the name I've chosen, an abbreviation I used often in my favorite part of geometry, doing proofs, CPCTC or congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. <laughs> so I love Sarah's pattern names. She comes up with the best names and has the most interesting inspirations. So this is what they look like. This one she did out of some of my yarn. This is um, favorite flannel jammies. <laughs> so anyway, Sarah was kind enough to be willing to give away one copy of each of these patterns. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start one thread in the 90% knitting group for this giveaway and what I will what your prompt will be is to tell us what way you like to knit socks either cuff down or toe up and which pattern you would like I mean I'm assuming if you like to knit toe up maybe you would like the toe up version but if you prefer knitting toe up most of the time and you want to try heel or cuff down, maybe you'd like the cuff down pattern. So anyway, just read what I have for the prompt. It'll be a two part prompt. What way do you usually like to knit your socks and which pattern would you rather try if you are the winner? And so what I will do next time I record then, I will do the random number generator and I will pull a winner, one for each. So basically I'll keep random number generating until I get a winner for each version um, you know if I have to do it ten times <laughs> until I get at least one winner for each I will but that's how that'll work so anyway thank you so much Sarah for being willing to donate those patterns and I hope you guys will enjoy the drawing pa Sarah's patterns are wonderful I've knit several of her patterns um, very well written um, they're tech-ed they're tested so they're patterns that you can trust and I would love to see some of Sarah's sock patterns knit up in our group. And if you're using my yarn, so much the better. And also please remember to use the, um, submit it in the conversion, um, conversion rewards program. Words are not working for me right now. Sorry. Over in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. So anyway, look for that thread. I will start that. And again, I will close that and do the drawing next week um, on next week's podcast which will probably be next week. I'm planning to record next week anyway. Um, new things. My hackle is coming. It's not here yet, but it is shipped. So hopefully I can show you that next time I record. The only other thing I got new um, isn't like, it's new, but it's kind of the same thing of something I already have. So a while back I purchased this skein of Samite yarn. It's blacker Samite from um, the Woolly Thistle. 
I thought it was super pretty. This was the Autumn Bowers color, which is, yeah, just Autumn Bowers. There's no number for once. Um, this is a really pretty three-ply yarn. It's a silk blend, um, a wool silk blend. It does not have how much wool and how much silk, but anyway. It's a 100 gram skein, wool on spun, and it's got a lot of yardage on it. It's a, I would say, I guess, for the grams, yards per gram, it would be a light fingering. It's like 478 yards. Um, again, if you if you listen to the Yarns at Yinhu podcast or watch the Fiber Town podcast with Emily, you'll know that Sarah and Emily have been doing a knit along for the Iris Shrug. I don't know if it's still going on. I don't know if it ended at the end of June or if it's going through July. But anyway, I've been listening to that, and I've seen the Irish Shrug by Melody Hoffman. I saw, I remember when it came out, and I thought, oh, that's cute. Um, I don't always do shrugs, but it's a very pretty lace pattern, and so it got me thinking about it. I thought maybe I would like that as a shrug. It's it, it's longer than some shrugs. Some shrugs are shorter. I'm showing you, and you can't see on me. But anyway, some are shorter. This one looks like you could make it a little longer. Um, so I thought I wanted to give it a try at some point. I'm not casting it on anytime soon, but one skein isn't enough. I would need to. So I went to the Wooly Thistle and she did, and even though she does not have a lot of Samite in stock right now, she being Corinne Claire from the Wooly Thistle, um, she, this color was still in stock. And so I, I ordered a skein and I asked her if she had it in the same, um, dye lot and I said if she did I'd prefer that and she did have it in that dye lot um, Claire's wonderful customer service is fabulous at the Wooly Thistle she you know checks that stuff she'll send you pictures of yarn combinations if you're not sure about colors or whatever she's great anyway so I got my second skein so now I do have enough yardage to do something so 956 yards um, would be enough to do a shrug for me so that might be coming down the road, but at least I have enough yardage. Or to make a really big shawl. I could do a really big shawl out of that much yardage, too. We'll see. But that's all of the new stuff. Um, let's see. What else? That brings us to the Summer of Me update, <laughs> which I know you're all dying to hear about. Um, I didn't do so much unpacking and organizing this week as I had. I took Tuesday off. I, did, I hardly did any work work, like yarn work, on Tuesday. <laughs> And I cleaned. I cleaned like a crazy person, um, which was good because we needed to do some cleaning around here. So I did do a lot of cleaning. Um, I also, oh, that's what I didn't show you. Is it on here? I didn't write it on here. Oh, I did. It's part of the summer of me. Never mind. Sorry. I'll get to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had a major cleaning day, which was good. Um, processing fleeces, like I told you, I started processing bunny. Sewing, number three on my list was sewing clothes. That's the other thing I did on Tuesday. I decided I was gonna sew something. And I think I had mentioned, well I know I mentioned a while ago that I signed up for a three month membership to Creative Bug when they were having a $1 sale. It was like three months for a dollar, back around I think like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, around there. So I signed up for it and then basically didn't do much with it. And then started getting charged the monthly fee and, you know, how that goes. But then I finally did get on it a few times and I found some classes for some cute patterns. And one of them was the Clio skirt by Ray Hoekstra. Hoekstra? I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. Um, which the Clio skirt is a pattern you can just buy. You don't have to get it through the class. But if you do the class, then you get the class version of the pattern. Which I am assuming is different than the full version of the pattern because the instructions, the written instructions for this were lacking a bit. I guess they assume that you watched the entire video class, which I did not. Um, I watched part of it and then I think I didn't have time to watch the whole thing. And then I remembered, oh, that was a really cute skirt. I want to make it. So I downloaded the pattern and did all the printing of the pieces and putting it together like a puzzle and cutting it out. Um, and then I thought, well, it has the written instructions. I'll just use that. Well, the written instructions aren't super, super clear. So if you're somebody who has never sewn a garment before, this would not be the way to do it. But I had enough know-how um, that I could fudge it and it worked out fine. So this is my Clio skirt. <laughs> I would have worn it today, but you wouldn't have been able to see it with me sitting down. And it actually would go okay with this top. I could wear this top and this skirt to my mom's wedding. 
I don't think she'd care. <laughs> I probably won't though. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the Cleo skirt. It's really cute. Um, the front waistband is um, not stretchy. It is, there's um, interfacing in there, but then the rear waistband is elasticized. And I'll tell you what, and, oh, look, look, I put pockets in. Pockets. Isn't that cute? I have pockets on both sides. So this was actually some new sewing skills for me. I don't believe I've ever done anything with pockets in it before. Um, the way that you did the elastic casing for this was super clever. I've never done one this way before. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I did the length um, halfway between the shorter version and the longer version that's in the pattern. And I did the longer version... I don't remember if these were, there's two different types of pockets you could put in and I put these pockets in as opposed to the ones that have like the cut out in the front. You could have done that one, but I didn't do that one. Anyway, this is just some inexpensive quilting cotton that I got at Joann's a couple of years ago with the idea of making a skirt. I love it. It's super happy. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't have that much drape to it because it's quilting cotton. So I think if you made it out of better fabric, it would flow a little bit better but it's really cute it looks cute on me I'll try to remember to put a picture in here I wasn't super sure I'd like all this bulk from the elasticized back waistband and it is a little extra full I think if I made it again I would probably cut some of that fullness out you know adjust that but otherwise I'm really pretty happy with this it turned out well and it took me about a total of five hours I would say um, but that included at least an hour for putting that pattern together and you know taping everything together and then cutting it out um, and cutting all the pieces out I think if I did it again I could probably do it in about half that time just because a lot of that stuff I have and I'm familiar with the, the project now too so um, I think I could do it a little quicker. I did have some oops moments that involve ripping. <laughs> um, yeah, but nothing major. And I was able to fix it pretty easily. Um, but it took some time to do the ripping. And it was all operator error. That didn't have anything to do with the pattern. So anyway, I think it was a win. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, I did not do any more weaving. I thought yesterday, being the 4th of July and having some time, I might warp my loom but I instead spent that time working on my um, Tegna. Um, no natural dyeing, no biking, kayaking, or hiking. <laughs> it's just it's been way too hot. I'm sorry. Just too hot. My garden is still growing out there. We did finally rectify the issue of the couple of pots that were holding a lot of water here. It turned out there were plugs in the bottom that you could take out so that it would drain. Who knew? I didn't clearly. Um, and as far as me time out, I haven't done anything special, but like I said, I did take Tuesday off work, even though I spent most of the day cleaning. Um, that felt like a vacation sort of, cause it just needed to be done. And in my normal day, I don't have that time to do that kind of in-depth cleaning, but I also did spend five hours of that day sewing. So I think that was pretty cool. And yesterday was the 4th of July and I did not really do much work yesterday either. I did a few little things here and there. Um, but otherwise, my son was here. Um, we'll just jump right into 10% now. <laughs> um, yeah, so being the 4th of July, he had come up Tuesday evening after work. So he was here and spent the night. And then he hung out yesterday for most of the day, till about mid-afternoon. Then he was going somewhere else. Um, but it was just nice. It was a nice, relaxing evening and day with him yesterday. Um, we watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail because he loves that movie. So <laughs> it's crazy strange, but yeah. Um, and then after he left, I spent some more time knitting and I spent time working on... My husband and I have these communicators for our motorcycle helmets. We bought them back in January and we've used them like to talk to each other, but they've got a lot of other functions that you're supposed to be able to do. Plus, they're supposed to work on voice functions, and we've never been able to figure that out. So he basically assigned me to try to figure out how to make the voice functions work. So I did sit in the air-conditioned bedroom yesterday after we had spent some time in there like two evenings before 
trying to figure them out and we couldn't. So I was in there yesterday with my helmet on in the bedroom and I did figure it out and it was ridiculous because the instructions don't go with how you have to do things. I was watching random YouTube videos trying to get it to work, but I finally figured it out. So that's the important thing. Um, so yeah, did that. And then he and I watched a movie last night about Alaska, which was kind of fun. Um, and I didn't even knit while I watched that. That's rare. I usually do knit while I watch movies, but I just was enjoying cuddling up with my hubby and enjoying the air conditioning and watching the movie. So that was my downtime. I guess I did get some downtime this week. But now it's going to be all work all the time from here on out. Let's jump into shop news. Uh, the Merry Month of Minis pre-orders are up in the shop now. Thank you to everybody who jumped on those so quickly right after they went up on Sunday. Um, at least half of the yarn ones are gone already, if not more. Actually, it was more than half of them the last time I checked, so I'm sure there's not less than half of them. I don't know what I'm talking about now. Um, but there are still several yarn um, sets available for pre-order, and there are still a lot of the fiber sets. So go ahead and hop over there if you are interested in getting a Merry Month of Mini holiday countdown set for this year. Um, I'm leaving the pre-orders up until the 15th or until they sell out, whichever comes first. Um, but the latest they'll be up is the 15th of this month. And then those will all ship out um, by November 9th. All the details are in the shop listing, so you can check that out. Um, I did a giveaway yesterday on Instagram. So if you follow the um, at Fiber Nymph Dye Works account on Instagram, you may have seen that. And if you don't follow that account, why don't you? <laughs> You miss out on drawings when I do Instagram drawings. Um, I did a drawing for two different sets that included my American Rust colorway, which is, you know, fitting for the 4th of July. So I did end up putting some pre-orders up in the shop. If you are interested in having a skein of American Rust, um, because I don't have any more in the shop right now, I will be dyeing up more and putting them in the shop soon, though. But um, you could get in on a pre-order if you definitely want to get a skein. Um, it's going to be a very, very busy the rest of the month. Like I said, I've got a show coming up this, not this weekend, the following weekend. The 14th of July is the Gypsy Stardust Yarn and Fiber Festival here in Harrison City, about 45 minutes from me. Um, so please come out for that if you're in the area. It's from 10 to 4 that day. It's going to be a wonderful show. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that one. So I will look forward to seeing you if you come. There's going to be so many vendors. I will put the link to the Facebook page for that show in the show notes, and you can check out all the vendors there. Um, then I've got a few different wholesale orders I need to get out by the end of the month. They're all, you know, quite manageable and small, but there's three of them. <laughs> so I'll be working on those. And then the um, Summer Shenanigans Mini Club will be going out by the 15th. So lots and lots of stuff to dye and get ready but it's fun and you know it's another one of those things like yes I'm busy it's crazy busy but I love what I do so I can't complain about it and um, yeah that's that's pretty much it um, I think that's everything I've got for you this week I'm gonna go and I hope you have a good rest of your week and I will try to record next week before that show because I won't get to record the next week whenever we go to my mom's wedding. Um, we're going to be gone for six days. So I'll try to get a recording in for sure next week. But anyway, keep cool or keep warm depending on where you're at. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.